Have you been yeah, enjoying it. your visit? Too much. I've been enjoying. <laughs> I've been enjoying. Mexico knows how to party. I can't lie. They have a lot of good food and good wine. Yeah, and, it's uh, all a big party. No sleep, and you know, it's a good time. Yeah, nice, nice to have you here. Um, so I guess we have some questions from um, the press, and I'm going to be making those questions for you guys. We're going to start with Argentina. Argentina, this question comes from Argentina. Cinefan Girls, Argentina, Mariquela Calvo Ford, pregunta que mandó online, y this question is for Jennifer Lopez. In Atlas, you portray a cunning and formidable woman. Which iconic female characters from science fiction films inspired your creation of this role? I mean, I think there was two very specific ones, and actually one of them I remember, and I didn't think about it when I was doing Atlas, but Terminator 2 with Linda Hamilton. I don't know if you guys remember that film, but for me, yes. she was the baddest of the baddest bitches ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, I, I just remember being in the theater, watching it in New York, like, oh my God, I want to be her so bad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be an actress and that's what I'm going to do. And I didn't really ever get to do it when I was younger. And so now to be able to do something like it, it's not exactly that, but you know, that type of character. The other character that I really loved and that Brad and I spoke about very much while we were filming was Ripley in um, Alien, uh, Sigourney Weaver. So those two for me were the most iconic kind of sci-fi action movie characters that- One of the reasons why, why I love Cameron, right, is Aliens, where he works with Sigourney and then Linda Hamilton in Terminator and the tone that he makes and how awesome he makes female badass women. You're just like, yeah. that guy is the greatest at doing this. And so, yeah, those are the- Two excellent touchstones. What about you, Simu? Did you get inspiration from any science fiction characters? Yeah, I mean, playing um, playing Harlan as an artificial intelligence. I think there is a lot of there's a lot of um, um, blueprints out there. I think starting from Kubrick in 2001, even like the voice of Hal, who is so kind of even keeled and chilling. Um, and then, you know, I, I was a huge Star Trek fan growing up, so I loved uh, Brent Spiner as Data. I thought it was phenomenal and so i just tried to take although those are all kind of friendly ais but i tried to take that voice and that kind of friendly disposition and kind of warp it in a way to be it unsettling and a little terrifying yeah, and that, and it, yeah, I, I was like, oh, so that's why you're staring through me. So intense. I was just like, he's just staring through everyone on set every day. Right? <laughs> and, and, they were, yeah, and they were like, oh, that's, that's good. Keep doing it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> what challenges does humanity face regarding artificial intelligence what aspects of new technologies do you find most surprising I mean, technology is advancing all the time, and I mean, there's a lot of it that makes me nervous. I mean, you know, when you think about artificial intelligence, and even this movie itself kind of shows you, does a good job of showing both sides of the story, um, which is kind of what can go really, really right with AI, and how we can really use them to be a greater version of ourselves in a way, and then how it can go really, really wrong with like, Simu's character, <laughs> where um, they can destroy and take over and kind of obliterate humanity. So I think right now, for me, when I think about it, it's, it's a big question, right? There's, there's an idea of like, we have to have a lot of respect when it comes to artificial intelligence. It's just like any technology. I remember in the music business when the internet came around and everybody was like, oh, it's never gonna take over music. 
And then it was like, okay, well that that happened. And so you just have to really be open to the fact that there's gonna be changes all the time and not changes that we can, some people can predict and some people just can't foresee because we get so stuck in our own reality. But um, yeah, I think it's about respecting it and not letting it kind of take over in any way, but using it to aid us in the best ways that it can. <risa> bueno, tenemos una pregunta de Brasil, fan influencia, es de Diego Cuña, y the question is for Jennifer Lopez. With, with an impressive career and numerous films, to your credit, do you still experience those famous butterflies in your stomach when working on projects like the new Netflix film, Atlas? I have butterflies right now. Huh? I always have butterflies. I don't think, you know, it ever gets old to me, no matter how long I've been in this business. I um, always feel the excitement of doing what I do and being able to be blessed to do what I do. For me, it is a huge, you know, privilege to be able to find something that I'll find something so young that I was so passionate about in entertaining and performing and singing and dancing and acting and producing and be able to be doing that my, my whole life. And so, um, you know, yes, I still get butterflies. I'm more at home, actually, um, believe it or not, on stage in front of, you know, 30,000 people than I am in a room like this. You know what I mean? I'm more at home in, you know, the, on the set, in a little two by two with a green screen behind me and make believe I'm falling through the planet. I, I can attest to that. Acting crazy and, you know, have my adrenaline at 100 and really acting and, you know, just putting myself in another realm. I feel very comfortable in those situations, I guess, because I've been doing it a long time. I think it shows. I mean, I think we were, we were, remember on our content day when we were, reviewing your Super Bowl footage, and I was just like, you're one of the best to ever do it. To ever do it, period. What about, what about you, Simu? Do you still get those photos? Yeah, I, I feel really at home when I'm on stage in front of the Super Bowl, you know, 75,000 fans, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think what Jen said really rings true. I think um, you know I think the butterflies never really go away, but I think we we I think as artists um, and and certainly as performers, I think find find a way to be excited by the butterflies and to use that kind of nervous energy um, and to embrace it in a way. Um, you know, I think some of the greatest actors I've ever known and ones I look up to experience terrible stage fright and nervousness and anxiety, and it's not the lack of those things that allows them to be great. It's that they accept it and then they embrace it and then they work through it, which I think is pretty incredible. And what happens as a director? Do you still get butterflies? Yeah. Yes, I, I I came from animation. I sit in a room by myself and draw pictures. That's like my background. So when you go to a set and there's 400 people that want your opinion, it's a little bit nerve wracking. But just to add on to what they said, generally I think those butterflies are because you care so much. Right? Like, if you didn't have that, something would be wrong. Like, you, you need to have that. It means you've invested so much, you care so much, and it's sort of like your body's preparation to, like, pour your heart out into something, I, I think is what happens. But uh, one of the things that both of them said that was 100% true is the sooner you can get into the flow state, the better. The more at home you are, like, as, as a creative who who wakes up every day and all I want to do is create. Like literally, you can ask my girlfriend, I drive her crazy. I would wake up and I just want to go make something. And, and when you get in that flow state... You can make her breakfast in bed. Dude, I don't want to poison her. I am not good at cooking. I'll do everything. You can make her a cup of coffee. There you go. I do that. I do, do that. But like once you get in that flow state, it's like that's what you live for, you know, being that creator and being that creative state. And so, yeah, once you get in that space, you never want to leave it. It's so addicting. You're like, this is what I was built to do. I love doing this. So I think if you don't, if you don't get the butterflies, maybe that means you're AI or a robot. You should check. Tenemos ahora una pregunta de Brasil, de Estación Nero, eh, y Caro Rodríguez pregunta para Simu. Wow, ¿really? Yes, you got your own question. ¿Es eso por mí? Para Simu, de Brasil. Um, what is it like to work with Jennifer Lopez, who is also regarded as the premier action actress of our century? Uh. 
It's an amazing. The, the, the question was, what is it like to work with Jennifer Lopez? The iconic performers of our, of our, of our generation. Of um, it was great. You know, I remember one of the first days I showed up to set, and you know, my, my part in the movie, you know, as, as a villain, you know, come, I, I come in a little bit later, but I come to set and I'm like, hey, Jen, how are you? You know, she was so like, she just seemed like such a trooper in that little canopy where she and Smith resided for so much of the movie, you know, and I was like, hey, how's it going? She's like, I've been here for six weeks. How are you? And I'm like, well, I have no right to, I have no right to complain. I mean, no, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was inspirational. I, I definitely had butterflies. Um, you know, showing up to set, knowing that I was going to have to work with her. Um, in my mind, she's always made in Manhattan, Jen. So um, it was tough for me to get into the um, mindset of ha trying to kill her. It was very um, not not what I would, uh, would would say would be my natural state, but uh, um, it was it was incredible. It was incredible, and I and I so appreciated getting to know her better over the course of. Even promoting this movie as well. It's so fun. Thank you. In my mind, you were dancing with Fiona Apple and Hustlers. Right now? Right minute. Okay. <laughs> I go out of sight. I'm out of sight, generally. Are, are you out of sight? Raise my hand, Hustlers. Got it. Yes. Maybe it's the ringing of a cell. I love the cell, too. So uh, there's a question for you, Brad, as well. Um, you're like, wait, what's it like working with Jennifer Lopez? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with Jennifer Lopez. Um, your filmography reveals a strong focus on exploring nature. What inspired the shift to create a film centered around artificial intelligence?